said, but uh, roll along here, Billy LaPlante on the inside row to the out five, outside LaFave. Second row, it'll be Castell to the outside. We'll go the six machine is now making his way up through is the 27 machine as he puts a little fender love as they head in the turns number one quickly off to the race lead it is the Lefebvre with a race lead we're gonna yellow as Austin get back on the inside pull in that green 05 car to the outside the 24 Billy LaPlante as now we got green fly back onto the field. The old six machine of Lefebvre is back underway. Green flag on the track. No laps completed here for the Bandits. As it will be. Lefebvre off to the early race lead. Now coming to the outside is the Daryl Mitchell car. Gets up on the wheel just a little bit and has to back off as now the 27 machine gets to the inside of him. And now it's a three-way battle for the lead as they take it into turn one. Daryl Mitchell bonsai move into turn number one. Mitchell now, your race leader. He'll come out of two with a race lead once again. Down to the back stretch, still fire. The 27 car in pursuit. Lefebvre got shuffled back to third on that one. Mitchell now with a daring move up front and leads uh, coming out of turn number four. Mitchell, your race leader on lap number three as they come around. He'll head into the turn number one, goes to the high side, coming out of two. Back to the inside will go the 27 machine. Mitchell. Miller in that number 27 machine as now Mitchell into turn number three. Mitchell back to the bottom. Your race leader here on lap number two. Halfway home for Daryl Mitchell. Daryl Mitchell out of Sny as he'll go into turn number one and two. Mitchell, daring move to get the race lead here in this heat race. First heat race of the night for the four-cylinder bandits. He'll fire down to the back stretch into turns three and four. Miller in pursuit in that number 27 machine out of turn number four. Here comes the 37, Daryl Mitchell with just two laps remaining. Daryl Mitchell now into turn number two. Daryl Mitchell back to the middle of the track. He'll go to the high side coming out of two. Down to the back stretch, he'll fire. Miller rides along in second and Lefebvre in third. Mitchell now. Back to the bottom, coming out of turn number four. He's got four more turns of the steering wheel. We've got white flag on the track. Daryl Mitchell all alone up front, but a 10-car length lead for him. Daryl Mitchell looking to get back to winning ways here at MIR. Down to the back stretch will go the 37 machine of Daryl Mitchell. Mitchell will go into turns three and four, followed by Miller and Lefebvre. As Mitchell gets a little squirrely coming out of four, backs off the gas just ever so slightly, comes around for the checkered flag heat race number one in the books for the four-cylinder bandits tonight. Daryl Mitchell, your heat, win, heat winner for race number one. And then your track champion, Matthew Oban, the 89. Like to welcome back Peter Tsunami aboard the number 91 here tonight. Peter rejoining the field here after a lengthy time away from us. Green flag is in the air. We're off and running. Matt Zyra up to the early lead, but here comes Corey Castell on that top side of the speedway off of corner number two and down the back straightaway. He'll grab the lead. Stuart Musa, three-time winner this year, works it up into spot number two and Obey working from the back of the field. Seven times the winner, including the last five in a row here. Works it up into that third spot. Frederick Frobert rounds out the top five with Peter Tsunami in tow in spot number six as they make their way down the back straightaway in a whole lot of hurry. The top three are nose to tail except for Obe. He makes his way down to the inside of Stuart Musa to try to grab the number two spot going into turns three and four. Obe is going to stick it down to the bottom of the speedway and he will get by. The 101 of Musa is Corey Castell just about got the wall coming off of turn number four and Obe slide job on Stuart Musa to pick up spot number two as they make their way down the back straightaway in a whole lot of hurry. Top three have broken away by about three car lengths on Matt Zyra who's got Frederick Faubert all over the back bumper of him. Peter Tsunami in the 91 completes the rest of the field. Halfway sign is out. Three in and three more remain. And Corey Castell looking pretty strong here in the early going. But Matthew Obey is right there with him as they make their way down the back straightaway. Stuart Musal has lost touch with the leaders now. He's back to about four car lengths behind the top two drivers. Frederick Faubert starting to move forward in the 06. He gets by Manzara for that fourth spot. Battle for the lead. Two laps left to go. Matthew Obey in control of this race now as he makes his way into turns one and two at the top spot. Corey Castell relegated to second. Then Stuart Musal rounds out the top three. But Musal tries 
trying to run down the top two drivers late in the going as they'll come around turns three and four. White flag will be displayed. Matthew Obey gets a little bit loose through turn number four, allowing Castell to close the gap as they make their way down in front. Stuart Musau is third, then it's Fulbert, Zyra, and Peter Sanami in that order. Down the back straight away for the final time. Musau again out of shape off a of corner number two, not going to be able to catch the leaders this time. But into turns three and four they go. Checkered flag will wave, and Matthew Obey continues his dominant season, grabs the win in heat number two for the Bandits. Castell, Musau, your top three, then it's Frederick, Fulbert, Matt Zyra, and Peter Sanami rounding out the rest of your. Alongside him is the one, or excuse me, the two of Matthew Shantosh. Fourth row, Brad Reef to the outside. It'll go Dan Reef along with here of the 11 of Brian Green, Bailey McDonald, and the 29 machine Joel of Joel Hargrave. Green flag back onto the field now for this. As here comes Robinson back onto the inside, down to the back stretch, they'll fire. As now Robinson, your race leader, he's got Waldruff. He brought him along with him. We've got a car up and over and spinning in between turns three and four. Brian Green evades the car, and I do believe that is the two of Matthew Shantosh who took an awful tumble. Shantosh is down here in the front stretch. That might have been, I think that was Brad Reef over there. Goodness gracious. Wow. Up and outside will be eight of Harley Brown. Correction on that, that's a 60 of Scotty Woldruff. Tim Reef in that second row along with Sylvain Laframboy. Your top four cars. One lap in, green flag, racing conditions back underway here for the Mod Lights. Robinson takes it into turn number one with the 60 of Scott Waldruff in hot pursuit here. Waldruff on the rear bumper now. He's going to go to the inside. Robinson will slam that door shut as they'll take it down into turns three and four. Robinson, he'll hug the bottom as he'll come out of turn number four as Waldruff able to get up alongside of him as Robinson slipped up the racing surface just ever so slightly. Robinson now to the top side. In behind now, here comes the 60 of Scott Waldruff. Waldruff found that open lane on the bottom and scooted by him. Back to the bottom will go Robinson. Now LaFromboy, he enters the fray for the top three positions. Tim Reef back up there, top five. And now here comes the 29 car of Hargrave. Hargrave cracks the top five for the first time tonight in the Mod Lights. Scotty Waldruff, he won here a few weeks ago. First career win in the Mod Lights. Now Robinson going to look to change lanes here as he'll go a little higher going to the turn three. Nope, he'll back it back down as he'll go to the bottom coming out of turn four. Scotty Waldruff, your race leader, followed by the 88 of Matthew Robinson, the 7 of Silva and Lafromboy, your top three. Waldruff now record break, uh, excuse me, breaking the pace here. Setting the pace around there as he's up front in the first place. Robinson in second. To the third place will go LaFromboy and Hargrave rides around in fourth. And now the eight car of Brown gets around Tim Reef for that number five spot. Five laps in. And Scotty Waldruff will take it out of turn two. Down to the back stretch, he'll fire. Now the race for the third spot is the one to watch. Here comes Hargrave on the inside. He'll slip past the seven of LaFromboy as they head into turns three and four. LaFromboy back to the top side. Har Hargrave, he's got a whole handle of that SUNY Canton machine as he's now in the top three, sets his sights on the leaders. It is Waldrip up front, followed by Robinson, as now LaFromboy will drift high, coming out of turn two, lose a bunch of real estate. Here comes Harley Brown. Harley Brown will take a peek to the inside, looking for that number four spot. Can he get away from LaFromboy? As ha Brown now, back to the inside, coming out of four. LaFromboy will hold on to this time. One lap remaining here for the Mod Lights. And Scotty Waldruff fires down to the back stretch. He's pursued by the 88 machine of Matthew Robinson. Waldruff back to the bottom along with Robinson, but well, full head of steam. Here comes Joel Hargrave to the outside. Does he have enough time? No siree, as the 60 of Scotty Waldruff will come away with a checkered flag in tonight's Mod Light Heat Race. In second place will go the 88 car of Robinson, followed by the 29 of Hargrave, the 7 of Sylvain Laframbo. 3D with the 88 of Timmy O'Brien alongside. 29 of Tommy Conklin with the 77 of Lee Miller and Brian McDonald aboard the M96 tonight. Ready to go green. 10 laps the distance. Green is sort of in the air. And Austin's going to let this one go down the back straight away. They go a little smoke coming out of the back end of Mario Claire's 22 up in front though. Rabby leads the way. This is very important. Billy Dunn trying to get by on the bottom side of the speedway off of corner number four. And is Rabby your race leader as they make their way down into turns one and two and a bunch of smoke now coming out of the back of the 22 of Claire. Billy Dunn settles back into the third spot. Then it is Timmy O'Brien into fourth. McDonald is on the charge coming up into the number five spot after starting in seventh as we work lap. Number two this time by its Rabbier race leader. 
And Billy Dunn is having some vision problems for sure, trying to get by Mario Claire, and he will do so. So now he's got clear racetrack in front of him to try to catch the 0-1 of Rabby down the back straightaway into turns three and four. Now Rabby sets it on the bottom. Billy Dunn right there with him on the bottom as well, off of corner number four. And there looks like there's some flames coming out from underneath the Mario Claire 22 machine as they work into turns one and two and down the back straightaway. And report from the officials, there looks like there might be some sort of flame coming out from the right side of the 22. We're going to go caution here. And looking at Claire's ride, it's just still some smoke coming out of it, but... Uh, he had that smoke coming out during uh, <clears throat> the hot lap session. Yeah. I'm going to take a guess and see maybe a valve cover is let loose. It could. The gasket not quite sticking to it make could the seal. Be. Yeah, it, it very well could be. And uh, if it's not complete, ready to go green. Six Laps left to go. We're back underway. Green is in the air. Rabby on the hammer. Down in front they go. Billy Dunn thought maybe he was going to try to jump to the top shelf to try to get by Rabby from the number one spot, but he likes to go to the bottom. Timmy O'Brien in that 88 machine's got that ride running really well now. And Dunn's going to move it up to the top shelf, coming into turns three and four. Dunn on the top side. Rabby moves up to throw the block at him, coming down the front stretch. This is how important these points are, and Billy Dunn's going to let him know that he is not quite happy with that move. Down the back straightaway, and Billy Dunn is all over the back end of the CMB Enterprises 01 of Rabby into turns three and four, and Rabby is making it tough on Billy Dunn coming up off the turn. Down in front they go. Dunn is your race leader. And Timmy O'Brien with a problem in the 88. He's going to go to the infield. Meanwhile, Dunn down to the inside. Rabbit to the top side as they make the way down the back straight away into turns three and four. Dunn sets it down on the bottom. Rabby back up to the top side. They make contact coming off a of quarter number four. And Dunn with the advantage coming down the front straight away. But here comes Rabby after him. They make contact again in turns one and two. Down the back straight away they go. Billy Dunn won't put up with this for much longer as they make the way down the back straight away. They almost run out of racetrack. Going into turns three and four. Sideways almost into the wall. Coming into turn number four. Rabby with the lead. Off of corner number four, we've got two laps left to go, and Billy Dunn is not about to back down from Rabby. Rabby's not about to back down from Billy Dunn. Down the back straightaway they go. Two cars fighting it out for the win. Two cars fighting it out for the track championship, and Chris Rabby has the advantage. Down the front straightaway, White is in the air. And Billy Dunn now will try to set him up going into turns one and two and down the back straightaway. But Rabby gets a strong bite down the back stretch. Coming down into turns three and four for the final time. Checkered flag will wave, and this is the battle for the track championship. Rabby has the win. Second will go to Billy Dunn. Third will be Brian McDonald. Tommy Conklin comes home into fourth. And Lee Miller in the 77 in his Mohawk debut will cross in fifth. Wow. Game on. Yeah. The look for a green flag, folks. I hope I can make it sound as good as Tim Boltz did for that last heat race. They fire coming out of four. It is Whitaker. Now, as he comes down to take the green flag, we're under green flag racing conditions. Preston Forbes in second now. He's got some tough company behind him, but that opens the door for Bartlett. Bartlett out of Watertown area is now the bumper's touch of the 77X of Bartlett and Plank. Preston Forbes is going to be the meat and that sandwich come. Robbie Bellinger, correction, in that 55 machine. Preston Forbes drifts up on the track, makes a little hip check of Dale Plank. No problem from him, but the victor out of this one. 38 machine of Luke Whitaker. He is all alone up front, but here comes the Plankinator out of turn number four. He smashes the gas coming down to the flag stand. Two laps in. It is Dale Plank now rides along in second. Whitaker up front. Here comes the 55 of Robbie Bellinger. Robbie B Bellinger, multi-talented driver, races at many various tracks throughout New York State, down to Brewerton on Friday nights. Riding along in fourth now, the 007 of Roy Tarbell. Whitaker all alone up front. He's got Dale Plank in second position, looking to reel him in, but now coming out of turn number two, it is the 007 of Roy Tarbell. The smoking gun rides along in third. He'll kick that left front sneaker up coming out of turn four and looks to set his sights on the 77X machine of Dale Plank. Whitaker now with about a 20 car length lead down to the back stretch. He'll go. He enters turn number four coming out of Excuse me, enters turn number three, coming out of four. Whitaker continues to lead halfway home. Plank in second. Tarbell in third. Robbie Bellinger rides in fourth. And rounding out the top five is Kerry Terrance. Here comes Terrance now to the high side. The race for that number four spot is the one to watch. Terrance on the top side. Here comes the 55 of Bellinger. Bellinger goes low. Terrance goes high. Coming out of turn four. Bellinger's got the...
for four spot, but for how long? Now back to the top side. We'll go carry Terrence. He powers by on uh, turn number one. Now down to town two. It is Ballinger. He'll catch him here in pursuit. Side by side, they'll go into turns three and four. Bellinger, he'll drift up just ever so slightly, but Kerry Terrance, round to the flag stand. They battle for that number four spot. Tooth and nail. Plank, excuse me, Terrance gets a little high coming into turn two, backs off, but powers back to the clay coming out of turn two. Back to the high side will go Kerry Terrance. Bellinger back on the bottom now. He'll go up to the top shelf, look for a little more moisture out of that number 55 machine. Kerry Terrance to the top side. Now he's got that number four spot locked. Locked up two more laps remaining. Luke Whitaker, your race leader. He bobbles a bit in between turns three and four. Coming out of four. Here comes Dale Plank in second. The smoking gun rides in third. Kerry Terrance in fourth. Robbie Bellinger will round up your top five. White flag on the field. Heat race number two here for the mod lights. Or excuse me, for the modified. As now Whitaker coming out of turn number four. It'll be Luke Whitaker round to collect the checkered flag for heat race number two. Dale Plank. Right tire bell. Terry Terrance and Robbie Bellinger will round out. In the four, Laurent Lattiser in the 23, 19 of Luke Stewart, and the 15 of Travis Stacy making his first modified appearance here with us at Mohawk in 2012. Green flag is out. We're off and running, and Zach Aubertine to the early lead. Bartlett right there with him in that number two spot, but here comes a pocket rocket to the top side of the speedway off of corner number four. Slow machine as they all get by on the Sweet top Sweet mother side. Moses. And and I'll tell you what, everybody had to uh, show their honesty there. Down into turns three and four, the pocket rocket. Danny O'Brien to the top shelf through three and four. He drives around Zach Aubertine, goes to the lead down the front straightaway. Aubertine relegated to second. The battle is on for spot number four right now as Laura Lannister in the 23 has Shane Pecor just behind a black flag coming out for the 15 of Travis Stacy is... He is moving very slowly around this racetrack. Of course, that machine is the former. And look out, Laura Lattiser into a tire. Something has gone wrong with the front end of that ride. As you can see, the left front, heavy, heavy damage to the left front of the lead. Zach Aubertine is second. Ryan Bartlett, Shane Pecor, Luke Stewart in the 19. Nephew to Todd Stewart out of Kingston, Ontario. Green flag is back out. Kevin Federley completes the rest of your field. Down into turns one and two they go. Danny O'Brien continuing where he left off in that number one spot. Ryan Bartlett starting to chase him down in spot number two with the 0-3 of Aubertine rounding out your top three at this time. Shane Pecor in the 4J, the Warrior Racing entry. Works it up into turns one and two with that four spot. Luke Stewart completes the top five in the 19. Luke's been doing some running at both Brockville and Can-Am, splitting, splitting his time both on Saturday nights as well this year as he makes his way to turns three and four. The battle is on for that third spot as Shane Pecor dips down low, trying to get that position away from Zach Aubertine. Halfway sign is out, five in and five more to go, and Danny O'Brien trying to run away and hide from the rest of the field as he makes his way up into turns three and four with the top spot. He's holding about a five cart length, or cart length advantage. Coming into turns three and four, Bartlett almost clipped a tire down here in front but he collects it up running in that number two spot and he may have a problem with that 55 he may have actually clipped something there and it may have bent something on that race car because that car is definitely not as quick as before he's going to slow it way down to get the car to turn into the corner and this is allowing Shane Pecor and Zach Aubertine to close the gap down the front stretch Three laps left to go, and Danny O'Brien is on a mission tonight. He knows that that track championship still could be his as he makes his way into turns three and four. Two laps left to go, and O'Brien sets sail. The Thousand Islands RV, Bob FM 17D, works it up in the corners, one and two, and down the back straightaway. 55 of Bartlett holds down that second spot with Pecor into third. Aubertine runs in fourth, and then it's Luke Stewart completing the top five with Kevin Federley, completing the rest of your field. White flag is in the air. Farewell flag is waving for O'Brien. Picked up one win earlier this year, and it was on opening day back in May. And right now, a full straightaway advantage for Danny O'Brien as he makes his way into corners three and four for the final time. Checkered flag is out, and Danny O'Brien is going to grab the win in heat number three of four tonight. In preparation for qualification for the... Frenchie Chevy runs deep, 358 modified series. Ryan Bartlett, Shane Pecor, Zach Albertine, Luke Stewart, and Paul. The 7G of Kevin Gamble to the outside. The 24, B24 of Roger Levesque starting scratch on the field. The 71 of Delbert Legro. We've got green flag racing conditions as they go into turns one. 
Moran on the, the bottom side. It'll go the 74 of Billings. Now slipping by for third is the 188 of Papineau. Kevin Gamble rides in fourth. Here comes Tommy Jock Jr. to the high side in turn three. He slips past the 7G of Gamble. They race wheel to wheel coming out of turn four. Tommy Jock looking for that number four spot. Gage Moran now back up to the front, down to the back stretch. He'll fire. Gage Moran gets a little sideways on the back stretch. He'll get back off the gas just ever so slightly as he'll go into turn three. That'll allow Billings to close that distance ever so slightly. However, I think these cars were not set up for a tight racing surface, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. This will be a driver's track tonight come feature time. It is Gage Moran down to the back stretch. He's your race leader two laps in. To the top side, we'll go to the second. Four of Billings looking to reel him in. Kevin Gamble rides in third. Papineau in fourth. And Tommy Jock Jr. rides along in fifth, rounding out your top five. Gage Moran now back over to turn two. Your race leader. He'll fire down to the back stretch. Billings in pursuit of him. That number two spot. Billings looking for Moran to slip up here. Not sure if Gage is going to do that. Coming out of turn four. Moran bobbles a little bit going into four. He still continues to lead. Six more laps to go. Gamble rides in third. As now the two cars up front have broken away from the rest of the herd. It is Moran in the 16 machine, followed by the 74 of Matthew Billings. Billings rides in second now. Look, almost like he's just stalking, looking for Moran to make one little slip up, and Billings looking to power by that machine. Not sure if that's going to happen here as halfway home. Back to the down to the back stretch they'll go. The 16 of Gage Moran, your race leader. He's let every single lap. Billings rides in second. Gamble in third. Papineau in fourth. And here comes Tommy Jock Jr. in that the 31 machine rounding out your top five. Back over to turn two now. It is the 16 of Moran. Down to the back stretch. He'll fire. Matt Billings not able to close that gap. He's been trying very hard. He'll try a different lane now as he'll go into turns three and four. Back to the bottom will go Billings. Moran continues to lead. We've got Three more laps remaining. Lap number seven. Moran has now Billings has closed that gap. Billings found a little bite going into turn one, but Moran powers back to the clay, going down to the back stretch. Into turns three and four. Here comes Moran on the bottom. Billings, he gets some great bite in the high side in turn one. Let's see if he tries that move once again. Two more laps to go. It is Moran now. He'll drift a little higher going into turn two. Billings, he's starting to reel him in. Here comes Matt Billings down to the back stretch. He went from a 10 car length lead. Moran did to about a three-car length lead. Here come Moran now, looking for that white flag. One more lap around this circuit. It is Moran continues to lead. The 74 Billings rides in second. He has closed that gap, but to a one-car length lead. Now Moran powers off a of turn two, down to the back stretch. He'll go into turns three and four. Moran goes to the high side. Billings will go to the bottom, but Moran sticks to the bottom, coming out of turn four. It is Gage Moran. Leads all 10 laps here tonight, followed by the 74 of Billings. Kevin Gamble, the 188 of David Papineau, and the 31 of Tommy Jock Jr. rounds out your top five. So, there's on that. will be row four, and Dana Aikens completes the rest of your field. Eight laps the distance. Green flag is out. Aikens gets turned around right off the initial green flag. And we're going to go staying under. Struggled mightily the last weeks in pro stock jumps into sportsman and he is on a mission right now green flag flies we're underway first of three sportsman heat events on the speedway and brent kelsey into the early lead the one x of swamp battles in that second spot then it's louis jackson jr up into third look at devin Carroll go on the top side devin of course running a sprint car on off nights when he's not running a sportsman car so Devin getting as many laps as he can in preparation for some big sprint car races late in the year. Down the back straightaway, they're three wide with Ricky Thompson, Jessica Power, and Devin Carone in that fourth spot. But Carone will hang on to spot number four as they make their way into turns three and four. It is Brent Kelsey, your race leader, down the front straightaway. He's got about five car lengths on Nolan Swamp, who runs in that second spot. And Devin Carone trying to make that outside groove work. He is way out there where nobody has tested the waters yet, and he's almost got that groove work. In. He's working up onto the top side of Jessica Powers, 52. And right now, Carone making some headway up on the top side of the speedway off of corner number four. Gets by Power for fourth. Now he's in pursuit of Louis Jackson Jr. Meanwhile, Nolan Swat pushes up a little too high. And Jackson tries to get by. No such luck that time down the back straightaway. Brent Kelsey, by the way, has checked out. Gone away from the rest of the field as they battle two by two up off the corner. Kelsey leads the way by a full straightaway. Nolan Swat settles back in a second. And we're still after each other. 
Bradley here for third, fourth, and fifth. Down into turns one and two. Swamp on the top side. Here comes Jessica Power in a bid for third, and she's going to get it coming down the back stretch. And Devin Carone loses out in that position. He goes from third all the way back to fifth with Louis Jackson Jr. just in front of him. Down the front straight away they go. Swamp just about got a piece of the fence down here in the front stretch. We're five laps into this one. And Brent Kelsey is your race leader as they make their way down the back straightaway. Jessica Power and Nolan Swamp at each other for second and third. Down into turns three and four. They go Swamp on the top shelf. Jessica Power way down low against the tires off of corner number four. Power with the advantage at the, fr at the flag stand. Two laps remaining, and Brent Kelsey has gone away from the rest of the field. He's made that gap even bigger now. Almost a little over a full straightaway right now for Brent Kelsey as he comes up off of corner number four. White flag in the air from Austin Swamp. And Kelsey on a mission here tonight. He has gone winless in his sportsman career. And looking to change that here tonight as Jessica Power holds down second as Nolan Swamp up into that third spot with Louis Jackson Jr. and Demi Carrell rounding up the top five. Dana Aikens trying to battle from the back of the pack as well. But off of corner number four, Brent Kelsey will grab the win in heat number one. Second will go to Power in the 52. Third will be Swamp. Louis Jackson Jr. comes home in fourth. And Demi Carone rounds out the top five. New York giving the sportsman a roll here. We'll have to figure if that's junior or senior. I'm going to take a venture and say it's junior. Green flag racing conditions as Josh Brockway takes him into turns one and two. On the bottom will go Goddard to the top side. Now White Mullen gets shuffled out and he loses all of the spots. Back to the field he'll go. To the bottom will go Goddard. To the top side is Brockway. Goddard hugs the bottom coming out of turn number four. He leads lap number one as now Brockway rides in second. Followed by the 12 of Brandon Hagen. Hagen pushes up to the track. That'll open the door for the 10 of Josh Van Brocklin. Hagen slams that door shut as they come out of turn number two. Goddard up front all by himself. But here comes Van Brocklin. He loves that dry, slick track, just like last fall in this Super Dirt Series Sportsman race here at Mohawk. Goddard to the bottom. Josh Brockway, he's got his hands full now as Van Brocklin tries a power move to the top side, and he ran out of racing surface. That'll open the door for the 12 of Brandon Hagen. Hagen rides in second. Here comes Brockway in third. Dylan Evoy, the 2012 track champion here at Mohawk. Back-to-back -back champion for Dillon leading the convoy, Evoy. Goddard now back up front coming out of turn number two. Down to the back stretch, he'll fire. Brandon Hagen, he's pedaling as fast as his little legs will go as they'll go into turns three and four. Evoy rides in third. Here comes Brockway along with Van Brocklin in that number five position. Up front now, back in the turn one. It'll be the 27 machine of Goddard. Evoy pulls up alongside the 12 of Brandon Hagen. The two young hot shoes. Probably two of the most talented drivers you'll see in the Northeast in the Sportsman Division. The 12 of Hagen on to the top side. Evoy on the bottom. Hagen hugs the top side coming out of turn four. Evoy battles back along the bottom side. And now here comes the 27 of Goddard as he lost a little bit of real estate going into turn number two. It is Evoy and Hagen. They battle for that number two spot as they enter turn three. To the top side will go Hagen. Hagen powers back now. Coming out of four. Hagen to the top side. He's got that number two spot away from the 83 machine of Evoy. Goddard on the bottom. Evoy on the bottom but Hagen all by himself on the top shelf. Out of turn number two now. Egan. Hagen will pull alongside the 83 machine of Evoy. They're battling for that number two spot. Now Goddard, the rest of the field has caught him. Here comes Hagen on the top shelf, coming down by the flag stand. Evoy onto the bottom. He'll give the old chivalry here to the 27. One more lap rem remaining. Here comes Hagen onto the top side. Down to the back stretch they'll go. Goddard on the bottom. Here comes Hagen to the top side. Kenny Power away, coming out of turn number four. Brandon Hagen, Goddard at the line. It will be Goddard by a Hoosier stub. I'm going to say he had him just probably by half a tire, maybe, Tim Baltz. That For the 73M of Rick Miller, 35 of Thomas Jock, or Tom, Thomas Cook. The th <laughs> I'll get it straight here sooner or later. Green flag is out. Jenna David in the number two. Corey Wheeler in the 47. Jonathan Ferguson aboard the 44. We're going to bring the yellow flag out, mainly because the start was not that greatest. You weigh $3 per paper, or you can get both of them for 5 bucks. So if you're at Cornwall on Sunday, don't forget to check out Pat Mulligan. He'll be, as always, at the base of our announce tower over there on Sunday night. Green flag is out. We're underway. Mike Arquette to the lead in turn number two. Daryl Nutting trying to fight back on the bottom, but he's had no such luck. Two of... 
Arquette, this is Zach Arquette, though, down on the inside part of the speedway. And Zach having a strong run out there in that machine. Brings it down in front into that third spot. Back there in spot number four. It is Rick Miller and Andrew Fish going at it for that spot as they make their way down the back straightaway. 44 of Jonathan Ferguson settles back into six with Jenna David, Corey Wheeler, and Thomas Cook rounding out the rest of your field. Off of corner number four, Mike Arquette sees nothing but clear racetrack in front of him and Daryl Nutting in the 42 trying to run him back down as they make their way into corners one and two and down the back straightaway. Corey Wheeler at the back of the field all out of shape in turn number two brings it back on the racetrack. But Zach Arquette having a strong run out there up into spot number three. And Zach trying to get up there with that and battle it out for the lead and turns one and two, but he's got Rick Miller to worry about right now. Here comes Jonathan Ferguson. That splash well drilling number 44 machine jumps to the number five spot down the back straightaway. Jonathan, the rookie in this division this year, picked up his first career win at the Brockville Speedway a little over a month ago in that 44 machine as he makes his way down in front with four laps complete in this eight lap heat event. Second of three on the night for the Sportsman Division and Mike Arquette trying to make short work of it as he makes his way into turns three and four with a sizable lead, about seven car lengths over Daryl Nutting in the 42. Then comes the 2Z of Zach Arquette and the 3M of Rick Miller right there in fourth and Ferguson continues to complete the top five. It's Andrew Fish, Corey Wheeler, Jenna David, Thomas Cook rounding out the rest of your field but Mike Arquette picked up his first career win as well a few weeks ago in that 2EZ machine after many years of struggling in pro stock action he has found himself a groove here in sportsman and he has just been dynamite over the last two seasons top five in points last year and right now solidly in the top five in points again this year with a feature win to his credit off of corner number four they will go Mike Arquette sees the white flag in the air from Austin Swamp 42 of Nutting having a strong run up into that second spot. And then the battle for third rages on. Zach Arquette holding down that third spot. And just one of his only three appearances, I believe, this year. And Rick Miller back there in the four spots gave it everything he got, but he's running out of time. Checkered flag flies for Mike Arquette. He grabs the win. Nutting will come home into second. Battle for third. It will go to Zach Arquette. Rick Miller comes home into fourth. Ferguson will nip Corey Wheeler at the line for fifth. Then it's Andrew Fish, Jenna David, and Thomas Cook. Jody Swamp out to see when they come around here to the outside. Stephon LeBron in behind them. Rogers along with the 48 of Dion Oaks. Correction, the O-N of Owen White. I got it right this week. All right. To the top side will go Dan Denway, a green flag. Looking to split the difference. Here comes Stefan LeBron. Hello, Elibu. He's got the lead as he'll take it into turn number three. LeBron, last week's feature winner, is up in first, followed by Denway, Musa, Rogers, Oaks, and Owen White. One lap in, eight laps the distance here for the Pro Stocks this evening. Stefan LeBron wasting no time making his way to the front. Three wide coming out of two. Owen White to the top side. Musa down in the middle as he's got the 44 machine of Rogers fighting. That number two spot is the one to watch on the racetrack here tonight. Denway now along with White. They tag a little bit. Coming out of turn number four. White to the top side. Here comes Denmoyer. Going to look to run him up the racetrack just a little bit. Denway now backs off it. Coming out of turn two. That will open the door for the O.N. of Owen White. Owen White and then at number two spot. Looking to run down race leader Stefan LeBron. LeBron out of four. He's your race leader here on lap number three. Owen White in third, excuse me, in second. Denmoyer in third is now Preston Musa battling for that number four spot alongside the 44 machine of Rogers. Dion Oaks, no where to go here on this racetrack. He's got three wide in front of him. Not a very good view for Dion Oaks right now. He's got a fast car, but nowhere to put it. Coming out of turn four, LeBron continues to lead now as halfway home, eight laps of the distance. LeBron out of two, followed by Owen White. And the 44 of Dave Rogers worked his way, shuffled his way up in the number three spot. Preston Musa holding his own here. He's got the 64 machine of Denmoyer to the outside. Here comes Dion Oaks going to take a peek and gets into the backside. Dion Oaks and Denmoyer collect each other in between three and four. And not sure what transpired there. If uh, week, second week in a row, welcome Dave Rogers. We'd love to see you in 2013. Steph Ombra now looks for the green flag to get this restarted coming out of four. Green flag it is. Three laps remaining. Three lap shootout as Tim Bolt stated. Rogers to the inside. Here comes Owen White on the top side coming out of two. Not enough time on that one as LeBron heard the car and he hit the go fast pedal. Now back, back to the bottom will be LeBron. 
Owen White, he'll put it back to the bottom side as well, along with Rogers. Those top three cars battling out for the one, two, and number three spot. Back in the turn one, six laps in, two more laps to go. Dave Rogers to the bottom. Owen White to the top side, coming out of turn two. Down to the back stretch, they'll fire. Owen White now rides along to that number two position. He's got Dave Rogers to contend with here. As we had mentioned, he's getting stronger and stronger as the weeks go by at Mohawk. One lap remaining. Dave Rogers, he's looking for that number two spot. Can he get it away from Owen White? Owen White, last year's Rookie of the Year at Super Dirt Week and the Pro Stock Race. Owen White back to the top sign, going on the back stretch. It is the 44 machine of Rogers. He's on the inside, side by side, Hoosier to Hoosier, coming out of turn four. Owen White to the top side. Rogers runs out of time. He'll settle for that number three spot. Preston Musa rides in fourth. Rounding up. Still going on October the 12th, 13th, and 14th. Get your advance sale tickets right away. $70 for the advanced sale tickets for the Fall Nationals at Brockville. Green flag is out. We're off and running. Alan Peters to the race lead into turns one and two. Rock Oban to the top shelf in turn number two and down the back straightaway. Mark Lalone settles back into third. Then it's Jody Swap, Chris Trombley in that top five orders. They make their way through corners three and four. Peters slips up the racetrack. Here comes Oban after him down the front stretch. And Oban not able to take advantage as they make their way into corners one and two and down into turns one and two. They go with Peters just be. Just in front of Oban, down the back straightaway they go, and Oban settles into second. The battle is on for spot number three as Mark Lalone and Jody Swamp settling back into spots three and four. Chris Trombley continues to complete the top five as they make their way into corners one and two once again. Peters and Trombley, he gets a little loose coming into turns one and two, and he will park it. Right there, but he's going to try to keep it going, and he does. So Trombley, he will keep it going down the back stretch, and we will stay under green. And right now, the battle for the lead is on. Obain just about lost it coming up off the corner. And right now, he has got Alan Peters just in front of him, but he's got a very fast closing Mark Lalone and a fast closing Jody Swamp just behind him. And right now, they're running wheel to wheel down the back straightaway for third, and in the process, closing in on the leaders as they make their way into turns three and four. Peters on the bottom side of the speedway. Obain right there in his tire tracks. Four laps left to go in this eight-lap heat event for the Pro Stocks, and Alan Peters not about to give up the bottom side of the speedway. Rock Obey looking to battle back on the bottom as well. Down the back straightaway, he gives him a little bit of a nudge, coming down into turns three and four, letting him know that he is there. Obey working that top side, the home hardware number four, off of corner number four, trying to get the lead away. Down in front, three laps left to go, and Jody Swamp settles back into that third spot. Mark Lalone not about to give it up, though. He's still working that top side, coming off of corner number two and down the back straightaway with Alan Peters still your race leader. Obey still settling in the second top four nose to tail as they make their way through corners three and four. Two laps left to go from Austin Swamp up top on the flag stand. And Alan Peters, Rock Oban, Jody Swamp, and Mark Lalone. They're a great battle right now for the number one spot. And it continues as they motor down the back stretch. Now Peters opens up a little bit of a lead. About two car lengths going into turns three and four. Obain's now going to deal with Jody Swamp in the 69. Up off of corner number four. They go white flag will be displayed this time by for Peters. As Obain settles back into second. But he can't rest too much longer as Jody Swamp is right there knocking on the door. Here comes Mark Lalone in that number eight machine. You can't count him out either. Down the back straight away for the final time as Chris Trombley goes by in fifth in the fourth. 14 checkered flag will wave and Alan Peters will grab the second pro stock heat event and Le, excuse me rocks the distance here LaPlante and Lefebvre they're up front they look for that green flag from Austin Swamp coming out of turn four green flag on the field Lefebvre your early race leader now as they'll take it into turn one followed by Castell he rides that number two spot to the outside We'll go full bear, but now Stuart Musa waiting for no one as now spinning on the turn number two is Jenny Morin, and that'll certainly bring out the yellow flag here. Not sure what transpired, but yellow flag will be on the field here as Morin spun in the turn number two, but Stuart Musa, uh, hey Brian, one lap complete. So it'll be Cora Castell, your race leader, as now he's got Musa to contend with. Down to the green flag. We're back under racing conditions. Musa waiting for no one, as I said earlier. He's got a little bit of a push as now Castell will pull up alongside of him high in turn two. They race side by side as they'll enter turns three and four. Oban now hops into that number fifth position. Here comes Daryl Mitchell riding along in third. He's waiting for one of these boys to bobble, and he'll find an opening as now 
the 89 of Oban, all over the rear bumper of Fulbear. But Stuart Musa, your race leader on lap number two. Musa is up in front. Followed here by the 28 of Castell. Daryl Mitchell rides in third. Here comes Oban, the 2012 track champion at Mohawk for the Bandits. He's looking to get that number four spot away here from Fulbear. He does on lap number three. It is Oban, rides in fourth. Stuart Musa has a wicked push as he goes into turn two, and that'll open up for the 28 of Castell. Castell finds the open door, slips in through for the race lead. Now as they enter turns three and four, Musa gets shuffled back into second, but now Castell will drift high, coming out of four. Back to the line, it'll be the 101 of Musa and Castell. Score lap number four as Stuart Musa, your race leader, is now he'll skid it out of turn number two, backs off. He may have a handling issue here. We've got him three wide, piling up Musa. Now into Castell, along with Daryl Mitchell. They collect each other into turns three. Not sure what transpired in that event, Tim, but a couple of cars running out of real estate very quickly. Mitchell able to get away under his own power. And as they come up, turn four. The 27 of Miller rides in that number three spot along with the 06 of Lefebvre. Coming out of turn four, Matthew Oban gets the green flag as he is your race leader as they take it into turn number one. Oban up front now. Lefebvre getting hot pursuit here, trying to reel him in, but Oban not waiting for anyone on this night. He's looking to put an exclamation point on his track championship with a feature win here tonight at Mohawk. Coming out of turn four, Oban, your race leader is now. The 91 of Tsunami will drift up the track ever so slightly, and that'll force Miller to the inside. Jordan Miller now on the inside of the 91 machine of Tsunami. He clears them coming out of two. They bump a little bit of nerf bars going down to the back stretch. Oban able to break away from the rest of the racers as he's up front all alone by himself. Tsunami rides in fourth, looks to pursue the 27 of Miller. Lefebvre now rides in second, seven laps in, five more laps to go for the Bandits. As now getting way out of shape is the 01 of Fulbert, or excuse me, 06 of Fulbert. He'll ride off into the sunset, so to speak, off a of turn two. And not sure if he's going to be able to refire, and yes, he will get back on the gas pedal. Keep it the yellow off the race off the speedway. Nice job there by Fulbert. Old man out breaking away but a 10 car or excuse me 20 car length lead for him. As now the 06 of Fulbert rides in second. Lefebvre going to take his machine pit side. Daryl Mitchell rides in third, followed by Tsunami and Jordan Miller in that 27 machine. It is Oban all alone up front. Three more laps for him in his 2012 racing season here at Mohawk. No correction, we do have a few more bandit features coming up here September 14th and 15th. Oban now into turns three and four. Fast and smooth. Smooth is fast for Oban. Takes it out of turn four. He's got two more laps remaining. Daryl Mitchell now. He works his way up into that number two spot. Miller all shorts out of shape. Kisses the front wall as he'll take it into turn number four. Ran out of real estate on that one. Is also coming around as LaPlante. LaPlante may as also well, well kiss the concrete. One lap remaining here for Oban. Oban just on cruise control now as Daryl Mitchell is going to run out of time to pursue him as now something lets loose off that machine and over in turn number four there's a chunk of metal or plastic not sure what it may be. Matthew Oban two more turns of the steering wheel for him looking to win this on Frenchy Chevrolet night coming out of turn four. Matthew Oban your 2012 track champion and Bandit feature winner tonight, followed by the 37 of Daryl Mitchell, the 06 of Lefebvre, the 91 of Tsunami, and the 27 of Jordan Miller. Brother Billy currently races in the late model division at Can-Am this year. And there he is out of the car, your 2012 track champion, the 89 of Matthew Ove. Six in a row. And they've got one more race left here on September the 14th. It is an open bandit show, and you can definitely bet that Matthew Olbain will be in line to try to get win number nine in the season. Is Jamie Davis from Frenchies 4 of Dion Oaks. That will be your starting lineup. 20 laps is the distance. Off of corner number four, we are set to go. 20 laps of pro stock action coming your way. Green is in the air. We're off and running. 
Quickly up into turns one and two for the first time. Alan Peters is going to take to the top shelf, and he's going to drive away from Rock Oban and Owen White as they make their way down the back straightaway in a whole lot of hurry. It is Peters, your race leader. Look at Stefan Lebrun charge through this field up into that third spot already. He makes his way down the front straightaway with Alan Peters and Rock Oban just in front of him, but Owen White right there behind him in spot number four as Dave Rogers looks to move forward as well in the 44. He is on the outside groove trying to get by the 102 of Moose out down the back straightaway, but with one lap in the books, it's Alan Peters leading the way over Rock Oban and Stefan Lebrun. Owen White rides back there in spot number four. Rogers has gotten around the 102 of Moose out to pick up fourth or fifth rather, and he is working on Owen White for spot number four. Owen White gets a little bit loose off of turn number two, and Rogers jumps up into fourth, bringing Mark Lalone to fifth. Down the back straight away they go into turns three and four. Three wide with Chris Trombley right in the middle towards the back of the field, but up off of corner number four, Alan Peters continues to lead the way as Trombley and Owen White just about got a piece of the wall down here in the front stretch, but they straightened it up, and we keep right on going. Alan Peters is your race leader as they make their way down the back straightaway with LeBrun now settling into spot number two. The four of Obey rounds out the top three. Dave Rogers up into that fourth spot in the 44. Then comes the five, or the eight of Mark Lalone rounding out the top five and Lalone's going to take a venture to the top side in turns one and two and down the back straightaway but up in front Alan Peters now has the six of Lebrun just behind him with Rock Oban, Dave Rogers and Mark Lalone in that top five order. Alan Peters continues to lead on lap number five, followed by Stefan LeBron, Rock Oban, Dave Rogers, and the eight of Mark Lalone. Now LeBron, he works the rear bumper of the 88 of Alan Peters. As we got the eight machine of, excuse me, four of Rock Oban gets out of shape in turn number two. So does Trombley. And not sure if the yellow flag is going to make its way out. Yes, it will. And that'll Still a two o'clock start time. Six laps complete, 14 to go. So it'll be Alan Peters and Stefan LeBron. They'll look for the green flag coming out of turn number four. We'll get restarted here. Green flag, says Austin Swamp. They'll take in the turn number one. It'll be Alan Peters. He continues to lead. LeBron now, he's got some tough competition here from the 44 of Dave Rogers. To the outside for that number three spot will go the eight of Mark Lalone. Jody Swamp takes a peek in the number, number five position here. Alan Peters, he hugs the bottom lane coming out of turn number four. Continues to lead on lap number seven. Stefan LeBron. He's working that rear bumper. He's got to be careful because here comes the 44 of Dave Rogers to the outside. Once again will be Mark Malone. He pulls up alongside Rogers for that number three spot. They'll go back in the turns number three and four coming out of four. Alan Peters on lap number eight continues to lead here. Stefan LeBron looking for the 88 machine to make one little snafu if you will and trying to clear that car as clean and fast as possible. Now Lalone and Rogers they continue to battle for the number three spot. They'll go in the turn three. On the top side will be Lalone. Rogers fights alongside him on the bottom but coming out of four Lalone now has that number three spot as he clears the 44 machine of Rogers. Rogers not going to give it up just that easily on lap number nine. He pulls back up alongside the eight machine of Mark Lalone. They continue to battle. Look at the battle for the number five spot as well. Jody Swamp to the high side. Owen White coming out of turn number four. Alan Peters continues to lead. And right now halfway sign is out. Ten in and ten more to go and the 88 of Alan Peters trying to run away and high but Stefan Lebrun's not going to make it easy on him. Down the back straight away they go. Mark Lalone settles back into third. Rogers is still after him in that 44 down on the inside as Peters who normally likes to run the top shelf around this place has learned in the last few weeks that the bottom side is one of the faster lanes and he's using it to his advantage. Stefan Lebrun knows that fast way is on the bottom as well and he's trying to get by the 88 of Peters going into turns three and four but watch for Mark Lalonde. He had one slip away from him here back on May the 25th. Six one thousandths of a second was the spread between him and Jody Swamp at the finish of that race and here comes Jody Swamp in a bit for the number four spot around Rogers in turn number two but couldn't get the job done. Meanwhile Back up front to the lead in turns three and four. Alan Peters, Stefan Lebrun, Mark Lalonde is closing the gap. Coming into turns three and four. Rogers gets into the mix as well in a 44 off of turn number four. And Jody Swamp starts to make his move to the top side in turns one and two. He drives around Rogers to pick up fourth, but Rogers trying to drive back by on the bottom. This is a great battle amongst the top five drivers with Peters, Lebrun, Lalonde, Rogers, and Swamp going at each other in turns three and four. Peters down on the bottom. Lebrun right there with him in 
tow. Here comes Mark Lalone once again. He's trying to work that outside groove into turns one and two. Six laps left to go. Dave Rogers planks that 44 down on the inside to get by Mark Lalone. Couldn't get it done that time off of turn two. And up in front, Peters trying to hold LeBron at bay. Off of corner number four, five laps left to go. I'll take you the rest of the way home now. Lalone in that number three spot. He's battling Jody Swamp, and now Dave Rogers looks to join the fray. Jody Swamp to the top side, coming out of two. Jody Swamp down to the back stretch. He'll pull alongside the eight machine of Mark Lalone as they enter turn three. Alan Peters continues to lead now. Jody Swamp back to the high side. He found the fast way around Mark Lalone, and he'll bring Dave Rogers with him for that number three spot or four spot as well. Alan Peters now slips up ever so slightly. Stephon LeBron, he's able to put that front bumper on the rear bumper. He's not going to loosen Alan Peters, but look out. Here comes Jody Swamp to the top side, coming out of four. Jody Swamp starting to dial in the top two cars. LeBron now looking to change lanes on lap number 17. Alan Peters, you can't pry him off the bottom here, so Stephon LeBron's going to have to try something different. Down the back stretch, he'll try the top lane. Can't make it work this time. Jody Swamp carries a lot of momentum going into turn number three. To the top side will go Swamp. Pulls up along Alongside LeBron coming out of four. LeBron to the bottom much faster off of turn number four that time. Alan Peters back up front now. Stephon LeBron slips up ever so slightly as now Alan Peters will break away by about three car length lead. Jody Swamp rides in third, looking to run down LeBron. Here he goes once again into turn number three. Back to the top side will go Jody Swamp coming out of four. Alan Peters, one lap remaining here for Alan Peters. He would love nothing more than to have another victory in 2012. Back to the back stretch will go. Alan Peters, your race leader. Stefan LeBron, he's going to have to make a move and make it in a hurry if he looks to claim victors tonight. It'll be Alan Peter on the bottom. Jody Swamp coming to the top side once again at the checkered flag. The 88 of Alan Peters, your pro stock feature winner tonight, followed by the 6 of Stefan LeBron. The 69 of Jody Swamp. Rocco Man works his way back into the number fourth spot, and Mark Lerone will round out your top five. To Victor Lane with Tim Baltz, and at this time, I'm going to send it down to you, Tim. Get out of the way. But Alan Peters jumps out of the car, first win of the season. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, he, he looks more out. <laughs> there he's going. He's going to do the big wing. Well, he was going to do the big wing dance, but he decided to jump down. We'll jump down in front, get a word with Alan here. And <laughs> you got to get the little guy in there. There we go. All right. The newest addition. And I'll tell you what, Alan, great job out there. I don't know about out in front. You look like you had everybody covered, but behind you, they were racing their tails off out there. Great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank my brother PJ. He blew my motor. I think it was two weeks ago. <laughs> he, he gave me the exact same setup that he runs, and I'll tell you what, he knows what he's doing. Now, of course, you know, yeah, exactly. He does now. He is the champion this year. Of course, you like to run the top side around this place, but the bottom seemed to come in tonight very well for you. Yeah, it was good. But I was trying with the open motor last times on the top, and just too much weight, not enough RPM with the I guess the crates. Is this a pretty good way to end the season for you? I know it's been a struggle the last few weeks, but you got the job done. It's the best way to win. <laughs> Absolutely, Alan. Well, congratulations. Let you go celebrate with the newest addition of the family and the rest of your family as well. Alan Peters, first win of the season. And right now, Frenchie. As now, it'll be the 30 of Tim Reef. To the outside, the 8 of Harley Brown. They look for green coming out of 4. Austin Swamp, do you like what you see? Show us the green flag, and he does. In the turn 1 now. Tim Reef will lead him into turn one. Now to the inside. Matt Robinson makes his way along the bottom and gets by the 30 of Tim Reef. Matthew Robinson now, your new race leader. To the inside will go Scotty Waldruff. Three wide going into four. Sylvain Lefromboy, the third car in the mix, goes to the top side, finds the fast way around the racetrack. Scotty Waldruff rides in second. Matthew Robinson up front by himself here as Lafromboy starts to go fade a little bit coming out of two. Waldruff, he'll drift back up from that number two spot in front of Lafromboy. Brian Green started scratching on the field, already made his way up in the number four spot. Brian Green to the top side now, as taking a peek on the inside as well is the 151 of Bailey McDonald. Lap number two. 
Here comes Matthew Robinson down to the back stretch. He'll fire with Scotty Waldruff in pursuit with Sylvain Laframboy and Brian Green into the top five. He rides in that number four spot. The 11 looking uh, number 11 car and the mod light here. Brian Green to the bottom now. Sets his sights on the 60 machine of Scotty Waldruff. Waldruff will go to the bottom, but here comes Brian Green back to the top side. Matthew Robinson has been able to break away from the rest of the field here on lap number three. He continues to lead. Brian Green with a whole lot of momentum, a whole lot of something as he goes into turn three. To the bottom will go Scotty Waldrop. Both cars shaking shimmy a little bit, coming out of turn number three, turn number four, rather, on lap number four. Matthew Robinson continues to lead. Brian Green now. He's pulled up alongside Scotty Waldruff. Coming out of two. Down to the back stretch. He'll fire. Brian Green clears the 60 of Scott Waldruff. Brian Green now. He's in the number two spot. He'll set his sights on that number 88 machine of Matthew Robinson. Lap number five. Robinson continues to lead. As now, Robinson, your race leader, followed by Brian Green. Brian Green rides in that number two spot, looking to run down Matthew Robinson. Brian Green, whole boatload of victories this year here at Mohawk. He's got over 75 in his career. Now Brian Green, a little squirrely, coming out of turn number four. Matthew Robinson, lap number six, continues to lead. As racing back in through the field now, as you'll see the 60 of Scotty Waldrop riding in third. The 29 machine of Hargrave rides in at the former fourth spot in the seven of Sylvain Laframboy. Back up front now in between turns three and four. It's the 88 of Matthew Robinson. Green to the top side. He's starting to gain ever so slightly. Halfway home here, 15 laps the distance for the Mod Lights tonight. Robinson back to the bottom. Brian Green looking for a little extra bite at coming out of two. He's got a whole head of steam as he heads down to the back stretch in the turns three and four. Brian Green has closed that gap quite considerably on this last lap now as Robinson will come out of turn number four. Halfway home, eight laps in, seven laps to go. Robinson back to the bottom. Brian Green, you watch him. He gets a great jump coming out of turn number two as he'll head into the back stretch and along with turn number three Brian Green now looking to pull alongside the 88 machine of Robinson Robinson not going to give him much room to work with but Brian Green found a little something in turn number two caution on the field as we've got the 151 of Bailey McDonald spun almost a fair single file restart it'll be Robinson on the bottom along with Brian Green the 29 of Hargrave and Scotty Waldruff, along with Sylvain Laframboy. Matthew Robinson fires. Austin Swamp says, go fast. Here's the green flag to do so. Robinson now on the bottom, along with Brian Green. As Brian Green rides in second, it'll be Hargrave. Hargrave's got a little something here for Brian Green. Brian Green might want to be careful as Hargrave has come in here a couple weeks uh, over the season and has looked very, very fast. But Robinson out of turn number four, yellow flag, as I do believe that is the number two machine of Matt Sean. Ready to go green, five laps to go. We're ready to go green. And so is Brian Green as he rides in second. Robinson, can he hold him off for another five laps here? Watch the action now as they come out of turn number four. Green flag, we are back underway. Hargrave in that number 29 machine. Looks to run down Brian Green for that number two spot. Robinson wasting no time here as quickly back to the lead he'll go. But here comes Brian Green. He'll take a peek to the top shelf. Can he carry the RPMs and momentum coming into three and out of four? Robinson now. All he can handle is Brian Green gets to the outside as down to the line Brian Green will be scored the leader on lap number 10 Robinson on the bottom Brian Green gonna take the long way around here on Robinson down to the back stretch they'll go in the turns three and four Brian Green he'll go back to the bottom side of this racetrack coming out of four lap number 12 about ready to be into the record books here excuse me lap number 11 it'll be Brian Green your race leader Hargrave he's got a little something here for Brian Green Brian Green might want to be delicate on that gas pedal coming out of turn two. Hargrave gets some great run on the bottom coming out of two. Down to the back stretch they'll go. Green on the bottom. Hargrave back to the bottom but here comes Matthew Robinson clawing his way back up. He maintains in the top three. Lap number three. It is Brian Green but here comes Hargrave on the inside as Green bobbles a little bit. Hargrave to the inside. Brian Green shuts that door on him. Hargrave now in that number two spot. He knows he can run with Green. Can he get enough to get by him? Hargrave on the bottom. White flag on the field. Hargrave, where is he going to set him up? Is it going to be turn number one or turn number two? Hargrave now. He'll take a peek to the bottom as Robinson loosens a little bit. Goes to the top side.
regains that power. Hargrave now going to run out of time as two more turns of the steering wheel for Brian Green. Brian Green back to the bottom, coming out of turn number four for the seventh time this year. The 11 of Brian Green, your Mod Light feature winner tonight, followed by Hargrave. The 88 of Robinson, the 7 of LaFromboy and the 60 machine of Scotty Waldruff. Congratulations to Brian of Matthew Robinson and Brian Green unofficially will be crowned the 2012 Mod Light Track Champion here at Mohawk International Raceway, taking it away from Robinson, who is the defending champion. There he is, getting ready to jump out of that race car. And uh, Brian, fourth consecutive win. And, of course, they will be capping their season off with our doubleheader weekend on September the 14th and 15th. Brian getting unbuckled there. Of course, one-way radio system and seat belts, Hans device, all the safety equipment in that car. There's a Hans device coming off now. And there he is, out of the car for the seventh time and fourth in a row, your 2012 track champion, Brian Green. Jamie Davis down there track side. Running lineup. Green flag is out. We are underway. 35 laps to distance to conclude the Frenchies Ford Drive 1 Sportsman Series. Into turns 1 and 2 for the first time, it will be Brent Kelsey, your race leader, as they make their way down the back straightaway. Jill Goddard putting the pressure on early in this race as they make their way off of corner number 4. Jill Goddard will lead lap number 1 at the stripe with Brent Kelsey just behind him at spot number 2. And Kelsey's not wasting any time. He's trying to dive down low to pick off that lead as they make their way down the back straightaway. Mike Arquette holds down third. Here comes the hammer. Brandon Hagen on the top side. He's going from Sixth to fourth in one corner as he gets by Evoy and the 52 of power. Remember, Evoy looking to keep this streak alive, trying to win every race here in the Frenchies Ford Drive One Sportsman Series. And then right now, the battle is for the lead up in front. Gilles Godard, Brent Kelsey after one another in turns three and four. Godard on the top side, Kelsey down low, and Godard will have the lead coming off a of corner number four, but Kelsey's not going to let him get away too quickly. Brent Kelsey on the bottom, Gilles Godard on the top side. Godard is your race leader. He's Sets the pace coming off of corner number four. Green flag is back in the air. We're underway. And into corners one and two they go. It will be a look at Hagen got caught on a line coming into turn number two and allowed Jessica Power to get by. But Hagen with a strong drive off turn number two. He grabs a fifth spot back in turns three and four. Off of corner number four they go. Brent Kelsey back to the lead in turn number four and down the front straightaway. So field battles just behind him. It is a wholesale scramble from about 10th on back as we got Ricky Thompson, Dana Aikens, Wyan Mullen, Rick Miller after one another. Josh Brockway in the 70B looking to move forward as well. Meanwhile, back up in front to the leaders. Here comes Jill Goddard and another bit for the lead off of turn number four. Couldn't make the job work as Brent Kelsey holds down spot number one with five complete. Five complete, and you don't know where to call the racing action. Mike Stacy and Adam Rozon went three wide with Jenna David coming out of two. Rozon jumped the spot and got it. Kelsey on the bottom now, up front in turn number four. Here comes Gennard. Goddard, he fights along backside on lap number six. Evoy now has wrestled that number three spot away from the two EZ of Mike Arquit. Here comes Hagen. He'll fight back along to the top shelf. Mike Arquit now back into fourth. Evoy in third. In second, it is Goddard up front. It is Kelsey. Kelsey now will drift going into four. Trying to crowd the 27 machine a little bit as now they go into lap number one. Kelsey, your race leader. Followed by Goddard. Goddard looking to reel him in, but here comes Dylan Evoy. He looks to pull alongside the 27 machine of Jills Goddard. Goddard onto the top side. Evoy is going to settle on the bottom, coming out of turn number four. Brent Kelsey continues to lead lap number eight. Mike Arquit now looks to go down, looks to be passed here by the 12 machine of Brendan Hagen. Brendan Hagen with a lot of steam coming out of two. Back up front now. It is Evoy. He pulls alongside now, even with the 27 of Goddard. Brent Kelsey says, have at it, boys. I'm up front here by myself. Here comes Evoy on the inside out of four. Back into one. Evoy, your new race leader on lap number nine. Evoy with a bomb power move. 
to the inside as now he'll lead the 27 machine of Gilles Godard. Godard to the top shelf along with Evoy. Evoy is going to settle back to the bottom. Coming out of four, Dylan Evoy leads that convoy on lap number 10. Yeah, right now he has got that top spot in pursuit of his ninth win of the season if he can get the job done and undefeated in this series coming into tonight with Godard running back there in spot number two along with the 30 of Kelsey who has been relegated to spot number five here and Brandon Hagen starting to move forward once again he gets to the outside of Mike Arquette going down into turns one and two and Mike Arquette will grab them the number three spot as they make their way down the back stretch Hagen trying to make that top groove work for all it's worth right now and Hagen motors around the top shelf coming into turns three and four he's alongside of Arquette off of corner number four they'll drag race down to the line Hagen will grab the third spot Arquette relegated to fourth here comes Josh Van Brocklin after Brent Kelsey he moves up into spot number five and lap 12. Meanwhile, Dylan Evoy on the charge as he makes his way into corners one and two with, or three and four rather, Jenna David with a problem with the front end on the number two machine and she brings it to a stop right here on the front stretch. Caution for drive one, Mohawk International Raceway pace truck peels off the speedway racing surface. We are back under green. Dylan Evoy charges down the front straightaway with a top spot as the 27 of Godard still not going to move from the top side of the speedway. Brandon Hagen's trying the bottom. Mike Arquette right there with him in that fourth spot. Here comes Brent Kelsey back after him in turns three and four as he's to the outside of Josh Van Brocklin and we got Thunder Anderson hard into the wall on the back stretch. Caution flag waves and he hit that wall a ton back there in that number 29 bringing out the yellow once again. And right now, is that's charging towards the front of the field where he's at right now. Green flag back out. We're off and running as Evoy leads the way down into turns one and two. Goddard still holds down that second spot as the 12 of Hagen battling down low. He has been on the top side of the speedway. He's been on the bottom side of the speedway. Just cannot seem to get the car set perfect. But right now, he is looking pretty good on the bottom. And he is trying to get by Gilles Goddard. Is it working up off a of corner number four? 20 laps the remaining distance now as Evoy will go to the bottom. Goddard finds a little bit of power up to the top shelf as he heads down to the back stretch in pursuit. But the race for the number three spot is the one to watch. Hagen on the top side. The two easy of Mike Arquit as now Josh Brockway comes to a stop in turn number two. That'll bring out the yellow lap number 20. Actually, we'll go to lap 23, I do believe, on that one. It is Evoy. Sees the green flag and he hits the goal for fast pedal as he taken into turn number one. Now, Brandon Hagen in that number three spot. He's got the two EZ of Mike Arquit to contend with. But Hagen gets a great jump off a of turn two. Sets his sights on the 27 machine of Gilles Godard. Is the top side the fastest way around this racetrack right now? We'll have to wait and see. The car's coming out of four. Starting to bunch up a gaggle of cars, if you will. Dylan Evoy would love to run away and hide, but Godard says, I found something up here. Great run off of two. On the top shelf is Godard. Godard now really drives hard into turn three coming out of four Goddard is doing everything and anything to catch the 83 of Dylan Evoy Evoy on the bottom watch Goddard now top south on turn number two down to the back stretch he'll fire Goddard can he make the pass here in turn number three Evoy gonna use all that racing track look to break the momentum on lap number 18 of Goddard Goddard powers by on lap number 19 your new race leader 19 laps in, 35 laps the distance. Goddard now, back to the top shelf. Evoy fights him off as hard as he can, but Goddard's got a great way around the top side here. The top shelf is the place to be for Goddard. Lap number 20, Gilles Goddard, your race leader. Down into turns one and two they go, and Goddard has found something on the top side. Hagen trying to find the same thing. Couldn't get the job done, though, as they make their way down into turns three and four. And look at Jill Goddard go on the cushion. Up in that number one spot, he's got that 27 working strong now. Evoy relegated to second, and Goddard is pulling away from the rest of the field here. And Jill would like to get his second career sportsman win. It would be his first ever win here at Mohawk. As they make the way down the back, straight away in a whole lot of hurry. 21 laps are complete. John Green has stopped to the entrance of Pitt Road in turn number three. Evoy trying something on the bottom to try to run down Goddard, but the yellow flag is... 
Caution flag waves at lap number 22, but how about Jill Goddard on that outside groove? He planked that 27 out in front, and I'll tell you what, that top side of the speedway has really worked itself in right now with 22 laps left to go in this 30, or 22 laps complete in this 35-lap contest, 13 more to go. Well, Gilles Godard set him up like a, a KG veteran that he is. He kept trying the top shelf, and he's like, oh, man, I got a great run here coming out of two. He would enter turn three hard and fast, and he rode that top shelf all the way around. Evoy stuck to the bottom, uh, and, and very smartly so on his behalf. But the thing is, Godard was able to keep the RPMs up as he came out of two and entered turn three, which negated the lead that Evoy had. So Gilles Godard, very, very wise decision to go to the top shelf. Great track preparation tonight by A.J. Baker. As always, I'll tell you what, A.J. Baker is one of the best, if not the best, when it comes to track preparation. Lap number 22, it is Godard, your race leader, with Evoy. Riding along now in the number four, uh, number three spot, the number 12 of Brendan Hagen, Mike Arquette, looking to finish hard and fast in that top five. Lap number 22, we're back underway. And I tell you what, Goddard stepped up to the top side on the restart. Here comes Evoy once again back to the bottom in his favorite lane down low. But I tell you what, Jill Goddard has found something upstairs that nobody else has found. Brandon Hagen has been trying it up there, but the car just didn't seem to want to go for him. And right now, he is looking to get around Evoy, though, as he comes off a of corner number four for that second spot. Meanwhile, up in front, Goddard still doing his thing up there, running that high line to perfection as he makes his way down the back straightaway. Brandon Hagen and Dylan Evoy after each other for second and third. Down the back stretch into turns three and four they go. Mike Arquette, Josh Van Brocklin, that's your top five. Then it's Brent Kelsey, Ricky Thompson, Louis Jackson Jr., Demi Carone, Nolan Swamp, your top ten as they make their way down in front along with Jessica Power and Corey Wheeler as they try attempt to make their way from the back of the field as well. But up in front, Jill Goddard is on a mission. He makes his way off of corner number four, and that cushion is built up strong, and he is working it well on that top side of the speedway. Brandon Hagen holds down second. Evoy is third. Jill Goddard, he is very, very fast on the top shelf. Dancing with the devil, if you will, as he goes in the turns number three and four. Hagen now, he's cleared Evoy. Evoy drifts back into third. Here comes Mike Arquid on the bottom, along with the 10 of Josh Van Brocklin. Van Brocklin now in that at number four spot. Arquit in the two easy in that rides at number five spot. They're battling out for the final points tonight here in the 2012 season at Mohawk. And lap number 26, Jill Goddard coming out of turn number four. He he is hitting his marks lap after lap on that top shelf. Goddard now. He'll go in the turn number two. He's got some lap traffic to contend with here. He's got the 35 of Thomas Cook Jr. to contend with along with the 44 car of Jesse Ferguson. Ferguson now jumps up into Thomas Cook's lane and he has to back off the throttle. Goddard, that may have broke his momentum. Lap number 27 here. You gotta be very careful now you're in lap traffic. Ferguson goes to the top shelf. Goddard, he'll have to go off the top, go back to the bottom, and now on the back stretch, he'll go back to where he was. This is where the race is going to be won or lost for Joe Goddard. Can he get himself into thick, thick lap traffic and prevent Brendan Hagen from running him down on lap number 29? Back to the top shelf will go the 27 of Joe Goddard. And we got a yellow on the field here as we've got a car turned around. I believe that's Ricky Thompson over in turn number two as he... Lap 29, Jill Goddard. As we said, he found the fast way around this racing surface, and it's on the top side. Now he's got Brandon Hagen. Dylan Evoy goes to the bottom, looking to come from the bottom to the top side, going to the turn two. Green fly back on the field. Lap 29, I'll tell you what, Jill Goddard car is hooked up tonight on that top shelf. He'll go in the turn three. He's got Brandon Hagen. Hagen's trying to make that car work as well. Lap number 30, Jill Goddard continues to lead. Five laps left to go. Nolan Swamp just about got a piece of the fence down here in the front stretch, but he keeps it going. We see make their way down the back straightaway. Jill Goddard in full control of this race. Down into turns three and four. Looking to become the only other winner of a Frenchie's Four Drive One Sportsman Series race. If he can get the job done tonight, breaking the streak of five on Dylan Evoy. He's got four laps left to go to try to get it done. Brandon Hagen using the outside groove to try to run away and hide from Dylan Evoy. But right now, the points championship is on. On the line for the Frenchies Ford Drive One Sportsman Series. Evoy has the third spot. That would be enough to claim the championship as only four points right now separate the 
Second and third place drivers, Van Brocklin trying to jump up into that third spot, but Evoy working himself around the top side. And Van Brocklin will now move up into spot number three, jumps in front of Evoy coming off of turn number two. Meanwhile, Jill Goddard off of corner number four with two laps left to go. He has got a huge lead over a straightaway on Brandon Hagen, who is doing everything in the books to run away and hide from Dylan Evoy, but Evoy's got his battle going on with Josh Van Brocklin as they make their way down the back straightaway in a whole lot of hurry. White flag being displayed this time around for Jill Goddard. In what could potentially be his final year in sportsman in an attempt to possibly go 358 modified racing in 2013. We'll have to find out. Goddard down the back straightaway. Lap car Thomas Cook will not be a problem. Checkered flag will wave this time by. And ladies and gentlemen, Jill Goddard has pulled it off. Checkered flag waves, and he gets the win, his second of his career, and first at Mohawk. Hagen comes home to second, Van Brocklin to third, and your Frenchies for drive one. Sportsman Series champion, and Mike Arquette pounds the fence down here at the checkered flag. But he keeps it going over there in turn number two. And that was... Frenchie selects Knight as Jessica Power receives her, ga her gift. We'll wait for Jill Goddard to get off the Hans device. He's got a pretty happy pit crew along with him tonight. He found the fast way around the track. The top shelf, and this car was hooked up and on rails. He's out of the machine. He can hear you now. The 27, Jill Goddard! As we'll wait for Jill to come around. Joe, my man, you went, ran one hell of a race. I've been struggling for the past month and a half. I'm just happy to be here. It's unbelievable. So what did you find on the top shelf that nobody else had? I mean, once you got there, you were hooked up and gone. Well, once Evo had the bottom, I had no choice to try it out. So <laughs> I just went looking till I found it, and it was fast. So did you plan to run the high side when you came out here tonight, or did it just happen to be work that way? I don't usually run that good here, so I didn't know where I was going to run until I was stuck at the top, and then I decided to keep going there, so it worked out. So anybody you'd like to thank? I'd like to thank my crew, first of all, my wife, my kids. They all worked a hell of a lot because we wrecked pretty bad on Sunday in the big pileup, and we worked all week long, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, till midnight to get it ready, and here's the benefit from it right here. Well, congratulations. Tonight's Frenchie Sportsman Series race winner, the 27, Gilles Goddard. Back up to you, Timbo. They're at a dead heat for this championship. Rabbi and Dunn are at a dead heat for this track title. Green is in the air. 50 laps of competition coming your way. I'm going to one and two for the first time. Rabbi, your early race leader. Luke Whitaker in the 38 along with the 17 of Danny O'Brien, but here comes Gage Moran working that outside groove in the number 16. Billy Dunn right there with him as they work it up off a of corner number four. Dale Plank in the 77 working in spot number six. Matt Billings just behind him in seventh. That is the battle right now for the Frenchie Chevy Runs Deep 358 Modified Series Championship and O'Brien with problems on the back stretch. Him and Billy Dunn tangle coming off on turn number two and O'Brien pulls it to the infield. Done for this race and out of it for the track championship as well. So O'Brien a tough break for him but right now Chris Ramey leading the way down the back straightaway Holds about a two-car length lead on Luke Whitaker with Gage Moran sitting back there in third. Plank up, up into fourth. Billy Dunn rounds out the top five. Six is Matt Billings. And right now, Matt trying to keep that 23D in his sights and trying to get on by him. In the chase for this, Frenchie Chevy runs deep series championship. Up in front, Chris Rabby making it look easy as he works it up off of corner number four in the 01. He's got the lead. 38 of Whitaker just behind him in second. Gage Moran works that Bicknell chassis ride to third. Dale Plank right there with him in the Twin Leaf Express 77 holding down fourth. Billy Dunn rounds out the top five in the 23D with Matt Billings just behind him in sixth. Then it's Roy Tarbell to seventh. Kerry Terrance is eighth. Ninth is Brian McDonald rounding out the top ten. Right now at this time, I believe it is Ryan Bartlett aboard the 55X as he motors down the front stretch just in front of Tommy Conklin with five complete. Five laps in. Chris Rabby looking to enter lap traffic on this lap as now the battle for the number three spot is taking place. Plank to the inside of the 16 of Moran. Done on the bottom. Three wide coming out of four. 
Du Billy Dunn now. He gets that number two spot, three spot away. Gage Moran says, not so fast, my friend. Back to the top side. He'll go. Here comes Billy Dunn and Moran. They are side by side in the turns three and four. Dale Plank, he looks to enter the fray as well. Luke Whitaker, don't look in your rear view mirror. You've got a whole fleet of cars coming at you and fast. Chris Rabby now splits the difference down the back stretch. He'll go as Laurent Lattisser will take his car pit side. To the top self will go Chris Rabby. A lot of lap cars now between him and Billy Dunn and Gage Moran. About four of them. Three of them, rather, as now Luke Whitaker in that number two spot as Chris Rabby took one out of the Joe Goddard playbook on lap number eight. He's gone the fast way around the track, and that would be the top shelf. Dancing with a double in between turns three and four. Rabby now sets his sights on the B24 machine, looks to get around him and have himself a bingo. That he does on this one. To the bottom will go Rabby as now Luke Whitaker rides in second along with Gage Moran. Wow, look at the gaggle of cars coming out of two. Billy Dunn has cleared the 16 of Moran. Sets his sights on the 38 machine of, Gate of Luke Whitaker. Lap number 10, Chris Ramey continues to lead. And we could have a little bit of a replay from the qualifying heat as Ramey leads the way. Billy Dunn has just gone around Luke Whitaker to pick up second. Whitaker relegated to third. The battle is on for fourth. Here comes Kerry Terrance in the 66. He is charged from the middle of the pack in this field up the challenge in the top five already. And he's underneath Luke Whitaker to try to get that third spot away. And does so. Meanwhile, Billy Dunn slowly trying to reel in the 0-1 of Rabby down the back straightaway. Rabby holds a straightaway lead, but Billy Dunn is very quick on the bottom side of the speedway. Gets into turns three and four. He's going to take it to the top side of corners three and four. Running Rabby down in a hurry. Down the front straightaway they go. 12 laps are complete. Dunn immediately fires back down to the bottom of the speedway. Tommy Jock and the 188 of David Papineau just in front of your leader down the back stretch into turns three and four. Now, Rabby has the outside groove. He works through the middle of the racetrack, right in between Papineau and Jock as they make their way down in front. Move over flag coming out for the lap machines as Rabby digs down low. He gets by Jock coming down into turn number two and down the back straightaway. David Papineau just in front of Billy Dunn, but here comes Kerry Terrance. That Twin Leaf Express 66 hooked up anywhere he wants to go. He drove it right through the middle that time. Off of corner number four, he looks to run down Billy Dunn for the number two spot. Up in front though, Rabby continues to lead the way. Tommy Jock Jr. right in front of the leaders as they make their way down the back straightaway in a whole lot of hurry. Rabby leads the way. Billy Dunn, Kerry Terrance. Matt Billings is up to fourth right now, and then the battle for fifth rages on with Rabby, your leader, at lap 15. Rabby is your leader. He clears the 19 car of Luke Stewart. Back to the top shelf, he'll go. Billy Dunn, he likes that bottom groove, but Chris Rabby able to keep the foot on the gas coming out of the turns with the top shelf. Kevin Gamble, the 7D will be the next lap car for the 01 of Chris Rabby, the point championship. And now Dunn will go dancing with the devil as he comes out of four. Lap number 16, he sets his sights on the 01 of Rabby. Gamble, will it be able for will he be able to hold off Rabby long enough for Dunn to get close? Gamble likes that top shelf as well. That's where he's run. Danny O'Brien, best seat of the house so far tonight as he is parked over in between turns three and four. Lap 17 now. It is Billy Dunn. He is in pursuit not only of the 01 of Rabby, but of track championship himself. Rabby to the bottom now as Gamble will fight his way back to the top side. The top shelf's where to be. Here comes Billy Dunn out of turn four. He's almost pulling in even with the 01 of Chris Rabby. Can't do so in lap traffic. To the bottom in one. Here comes Billy Dunn. Billy Dunn on the bottom. The 01 of Rabby to the top side. Rabby pulls up ahead. Now by about a car length lead. Lap number 18. Chris Rabby, what a fantastic track championship race this is going to be. Billy Dunn on the bottom. Rabby to the top sign. Here comes Billy Dunn back along to the bottom in turn number one. He pulls ahead of Rabby now. Just in front of him by about one car length lead. Lap traffic the issue. Preston Forbes, the man in the middle now. As Billy Dunn has cleared Chris Rabby. On the bottom side, Rabby looking for something coming out of four. Lap number 20, Billy Dunn, your new race leader. And Kerry Terrance has just taken over the top spot. He slid right up through the middle and
and grabbed the lead away. Coming down the back straightaway. Dunn relegated to second. Here comes Rabby back after him into third. The battle is on for the number one spot as they make their way off of corner number four. Carrie Terrance, your race leaders. They make their way down in front. Billy Dunn, Chris Rabby, second and third right now as they make their way into turns one and two. Right now in spot number four is the 74 of Matt Billings doing everything he can. Dale Plank rounds out the top five as we got him three wide going into turns three and four with the lap machines of Shane Pecor and Lee Miller right there on the top side coming off of corner number four with the 23 of Dunn working that bottom side of the speedway. Rabby right there with him in the number three spot. Right now the track championship belongs to Billy Dunn by one point unofficially at this time. Meanwhile, Kerry Terrance setting sail on the rest of the lap traffic as Kevin Federley and Mario Claire make contact with... The, uh, and Lee Miller pounds the wall down here on the front stretch in the 77 machine. Keeps it going. We're going to stand to green and Mario Claire with problems in the 22 after contact with Fennerly and he pulls it to a stop on the back stretch. Caution flag is going to wave here with 23 laps. Championship is far from over as well. And Billy Dunn looking to go to the top side. Kerry Terrence will fire first from the bottom. Green flag is back in the air. We're underway. Quickly down into turns one and two. Rabby tries to drive it deep into turn number one up underneath Billy Dunn in turn number two. Down the back straightaway they go. Kerry Terrance has the lead, but Billy Dunn fights off Rabby as they make the way into corners three and four. Now Terrance will back it into turns three and four and drive it hard off of corner number four from the bottom. 25 are complete. Lots of forward bite for the 66X twin leaf powered machine of Kerry Terrance. Now down to the back stretch. Ah, that two will fire Kerry Terrance. Down to the back stretch he'll go. Billy Dunn in pursuit here. Matt Billings now has taken over the number three spawn away from the 01 of Chris Rabby. Dale Plank rounds out your top five. Lap number 26. Kerry Terrance continues to lead. If this race were to end right now, it would be Billy Dunn as your 2012 modified track champion. Billy Dunn, though, not content with that. He's going to look to run down the Kerry Terrance and that 66X machine coming out of four. Kerry Terrance continues to pull away ever so slightly from the 23D of Billy Dunn. Dunn. Billy Dunn hooked up with this Laurent Lattisser ride for 95% of the season so far. It is Kerry Terrance up in front now in turn number three. Back to turn number three as well. Billy Dunn trying everything he can, but he just does not have the power and the horrid bite coming out of turn number four. Maybe he's saving his tires for the later stages of this race. 50 lapper tonight on the Frenchie. Chevy runs deep series finale and the 2012 regular season finale here at Mohawk has now coming out of four once again lap number 28 or 29 rather it will be Kerry Terrance three wide down to the back stretch as you've got Papineau and Federally mixing it up into turns three and four here comes Kerry Terrance lap traffic going to be an issue here on lap number 29 lap number 30 is where Kerry Terrance is going to run into some heavy heavy lap traffic and right now Billy Dunn just trying to keep him in his sights as he makes his way down in front with just 20 laps left to go caution flag waves on the speedway and we have got Nothing that I can see right at the moment. Possibly stuff to go. Ready to go green off of corner number four. Kerry Terrance sees the green. He fires first. We're back underway. Green is in the air. Terrance switches lanes. He goes to the top side. Here comes Billy Dunn after him and turns one and two. Dunn to the bottom. Kerry Terrance on the top side, but Terrance pulls away down into turns three and four. Now Dunn will settle it down on the bottom. Terrance looking to stick with that high line. Coming off of corner number four, but watch for the natural. He is working that top shelf up off of corner number four. Meanwhile, battle for spot number four on the racetrack. It is Rabby up underneath Matt Billings to try to take away that position. So they make the way down the back straightaway. Billings, a full head of steam off of turn two, will drag race Rabby into turn number three. They back it in up on the top side of the speedway off of corner number four. They go. It's Terrance, Billy Dunn, Dale Plank, and now Rabby pulls up into spot number four, getting by Matt Billings to move into the number four spot as Billings relegated to fifth. Here comes Roy Tarbell on the 007. He rides in sixth, and it's Gage Morin into seventh. Ryan Bartlett is charged up through the field up into eighth. Ninth is the 96 of Brian McDonald. Luke Whitaker, who led this race early on, rounds out the top ten in the 38. 33 laps are complete. And right now the Twin Leaf Express 66 of Terrance holds down the lead. The Mr. Rand 23D of Dunn rides in second. Another Twin Leaf Express ride up for Dale Plank. Up into spot number three, but he is working way upstairs. 
Into the heavens off a of corner number four. He's got that third position. 34 laps complete. 16 more to go. And Billy Dunn, you don't know if he's just trying to save something for the end of this race. It looks like he may be closing. Going into turns three and four. Durant settles it in on the top side. Billy Dunn right down low against the tires. We're 15 laps left to go. 15 laps to go. Billy Dunn rides in second. He's looking to lock up a first ever track championship here at Mohawk. Lap traffic now an issue for Kerry Thurant. He looks to get by the 77 of Lee Miller. Billy Dunn goes to the bottom along with Kerry Thurant. Lee Miller now gets a little squirrely coming out of four. Kerry Thurant back to the top side in turn number one. 14 laps to go. Kerry Thurant sets his sights on the 20, B24 here as he'll go into the turns three and four. Back to the top shelf will go Kerry. But where is Billy Dunn going to go? Out of turn four, Billy Dunn sticks to the bottom. Looking to gain ever so slightly on Kerry Thurant. Not sure if he's going to be able to do so. He looks best in turns one and coming out of two. But Kerry Thurant now, he'll put the power to the clay going down to the backstretch to the top shelf in turn number three. We'll go to Kerry Thurant out of four. Lap 37 is Kerry Terrance now as he continues to lead. 13 laps remaining for Kerry Terrance as now he's got Kevin Federley and Thomas Jock Jr. in front of him as the next two lap cars. Billy Dunn now starting to close that gap once again. Did Billy Dunn save that right rear for this occasion? Did he save it for the last 12 laps of the race? We got to see lap number 39 will be scored as Kerry Terrance. Terrence now will go to the inside of the 57 machine. Here comes Thomas Jock. Be very careful here, Kerry, as you've got Billy Dunn. Look at the pounce and make have you make a mistake. But now, to the bottom, make no mistake of it here as Kerry Terrence looking to get by the number 31 machine. He does so on lap number 40. And Dale Plank jumped the cushion in turns three and four. That's going to allow Rami to pick up the number three spot. Meanwhile, back up in front to the leaders. This is going to be a battle right down to the wire as Billy Dunn looks to reel in Kerry Terrence. He is right on the back doorstep and Luke Stewart a lap machine right there in front of the leader off of corner number four he gives him the lane on the top side Billy Dunn's gonna have to pick a lane do I want to go to the bottom or do we want to go to the top side where do we do and he's gonna have to settle in behind Luke Stewart he loses some ground to Kerry Terrance that time meanwhile the battle still rages on for third Plank has been able to get back around the 0-1 of Rabi coming down the back straight away into turns three and four Matt Billings continues to round out the top five with a 007 of Roy Tarbell into sixth, Gage Moore into seventh, Brian McDonald into eighth, Luke Whitaker ninth, and Tommy Conklin rounds out the top ten with just eight laps left to go in this one. And Kerry Terrance trying to put away his second straight feature win. If he can make it happen, off a of corner number four they go down in front. Seven laps left to go, and Kerry Terrance still holds down the lead, but... Billy Dunn is not going away quietly. Down the back straight away. They go into turns three and four. David Pampano right in front of your leaders. Here comes Dunn and a charge on the top side of the speedway, but the car just does not seem to want to go on the top side. He's going to have to make something work on the bottom. Four laps left to go. Or six laps left to go, rather. And Durant still holds the lead. Dunn with a strong drive down the back stretch. Three car lengths separate the top two drivers. Into turns three and four. Terrence trying to get by Shane Pecor as they motor down the front straightaway. Coming around, five laps left to go. Five laps to go. Kerry Terrence now, he runs up front. Billy Dunn now, he'll pull a wheel alongside of him, coming out of two. To the bottom will go Billy Dunn. Sets his sights on Kerry Terrence. Terrence to the top side. Lee Miller now, the man in the mix. Terrence and Billy Dunn get together. They back out of the gas. Lee Miller gets out of the way. Here comes Kerry Terrence. Four laps to go. Kerry Terrance, your race leader. Billy Dunn to the bottom. Kerry Terrance is in the middle. Coming out of two. Billy Dunn, do you have enough power down to the back stretch? Kerry Terrance breaks away with about a three car length lead. Top shelf is Kerry Terrance. Bottom is Billy Dunn. Billy Dunn out of four now still rides in second. Dale Plank in third. Chris Rabby in fourth. Matt Billings is in the top five. We've got three laps remaining. Can Billy Dunn win his first ever Mohawk Track Championship? That remains to be seen. He's also trying to win the Frenchie Chevy Runs Deep Series race here tonight as well as the overall title. Lap, two laps to go now, side by side. Billy Dunn to the bottom, gets a little more power coming in the two. He pulls alongside Kerry Terrence. Can they do it? Neck and neck, down to the backstretch, they'll fire. Kerry Terrence to the top shelf. 
Billy Dunn backs off the gas just ever so slightly. Kerry Terrence comes around. One lap remaining here. Billy Dunn looking to make the power move on the bottom, going into one and coming out of two. Kerry Terrence eases off the throttle just a little bit, but here comes Billy Dunn back on the bottom. Lap traffic now is the issue. Kerry Terrence, he's got a pretty comfortable margin here. Look out, some cars getting out of shape. Kerry Terrence to the bottom of the checkered flag. Kerry Terrence wins tonight. 50 lap event, Billy Dunn, your 2012 Mohawk International Raceway track champion. Billy Dunn, congratulations as well. We'll go out to the 66X to Kerry Terrance. Back-to-back -back victories here at the Mohawk International Raceway for Kerry Terrance. Just a reminder, stick. So second win in a row and second of the 2012 season here. What a way to cap it off on this Labor Day shootout. Fourth overall win for Kerry. He's got two wins at Cornwall this year. And there he is out of the car hopping a big round of applause. Second win of the season for Kerry Terrance. Former track champion here back in 2010. And picks up a well-deserved feature win once again as we'll grab a quick word with Kerry. And Jamie's got a bunch of goodies for him down here in front as well. They're going to get a picture taken with him here down in front. Then we'll step in here and take a quick word with Kerry. All right, here we go, Kerry. Congratulations, man. I'll tell you what, that looked like it was a lot of fun out there with you and Billy going at it. Yeah, it was. Uh, I didn't know he was right there at the end until he showed me his door, but I uh, just pushed it in the corners a little bit harder in the last two corners, and lap traps worked out for me. So. Seemed like this car could go anywhere you wanted to. You pretty much snuck in there and got the lead while the other two guys were battling it out there, and it uh, didn't matter what. You, you could go to the top, you could cut through the middle, and right to the bottom, this car was just on a rail. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. They split up, and next thing you know, the, the lead was right there, and just went ahead, <laughs> took it from the bottom, and I don't know, the car was awesome. It's quite the way to finish the year, of course. You know, you, you've ran strong all season, but, uh, you know, to finally get these two wins, it's got uh, to make you feel a little more confident going into these big tour races coming up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, get the last two here. Uh, hopefully we can three Pete. Yeah, let's hope, you know, you got the big one at Cornwall coming up this Sunday as well. That's going to make you feel good too. Yeah, hopefully we'll just take our time and work on this car, get it back to where it needs to be and go after it. All right, congratulations, Kerry. Let's you go celebrate with you guys. Another fine victory. Thanks. All right, Kerry Terrance for win number two of the